Hello and welcome to our webinar, How to Install and Configure the Canary System. My name is Kyle Kensinger. I'm a solutions consultant with Canary, and I will lead you through the presentation today. Now the Canary system itself is made up of a series of individual components that work together to collect and store your data, assign context to your data, and finally, help you maximize your operation. And from a training perspective, we break the system into these three steps, but it's important to understand how these individual components work together. And depending on where you are on your journey to digital transformation, maybe right now you're asking, hey, you know, this all sounds great, but how do I actually install and configure my Canary system? And if this describes your current situation, you've come to the right place. Canary offers free proof of concepts and 90 day trials. So if you would like to demo the Canary system and you don't have it installed yet, please send me an email or drop us a note in the chat and we can provide the appropriate download links for the Canary installer. Now, once you have the Canary installer open, you'll need to think about the function of the machine you're installing the software on. So for example, is it a data logging machine? A historian server? Maybe an application server? Or it could be a client machine. Now the role of the machine will determine which components get installed on that particular machine. So here's an example of the components that would be installed on a data logger machine. Notice with the Canary installer, the individual components are broken down into a historian server column, a data collectors column, and also a client tools column. So for a data logger machine, it's only necessary to install the type of data collection protocol that's being used. So in this case, we will be logging data via OPC UA. When the OPC UA box is selected, the Canary admin service, sender service, store and forward, and the Canary admin client will automatically be applied as well. An installation for a historian server would result in some different components being applied. And once you've selected the appropriate individual components for the corresponding machine, simply click install in the bottom right hand corner. And the entire process takes less than five minutes to run. And next, you'll want to launch the Canary Admin application. And to do so, simply search for Canary Admin from the Windows Start menu. The Canary Admin application visually organizes all Canary components installed on a server. It provides a single interface for all admin duties, including controlling Canary services, easily jumping between local and remote servers, as well as monitoring system health. The main home screen of the application features various tiles, with each tile representing a different component of the Canary system. So now let's take a closer look at the Canary admin application that's running on my own machine. So here we see the Canary admin. As I mentioned, every service and individual component has its own individual tile. And just by looking at the screen, Notice the yellow ribbon bar running across the top. The drop down menu next to localhost allows me to toggle between various machines. There's also a question mark icon. This allows you to easily access the Canary admin help files and you can search to find various topics. That's not meant to replace the knowledge base that exists on the Canary community. It's just a quick reference guide. And no matter what 
components you've chosen to install for your Canary instance, there are going to be four tiles that are universal to all installations. That would be the services tile, the messages tile, licenses, and the admin. Let's start with services. Notice as I click on the tile, it jumps right to that selected tile. And for services, we have the ability to stop or start a particular service. The admin service is the only one that's different. That has a simple restart button. You can start all or stop all services. It also shows you how long it's currently been running and when the last session started. If I were to stop a particular service, let's stop the calculation service, for example. It takes just a moment. If we jump back over to the home screen, we see that particular tile has been grayed out. We also see under the services tile, instead of running, it clearly shows it's being stopped. We can jump back into services and simply restart the service. And it takes just a moment. As I came back to the services tile, you may have noticed the breadcrumb trail that's created across the top. If we jump over to the messages tile, we'll see uh, our messages easily displayed. It shows the timestamp, the level, the source, category, as well as the message itself. I currently do not have any filters applied to my messages. By default, it shows the first thousand messages. And if I scroll down, it will display another thousand as I continue to scroll. You may notice a number of errors with my calculation service. I was messing around at, at the Canary Roadshow in Pittsburgh, um, getting things configured. And that's why you notice a number of calculation messages and errors. But it's also easy to filter and export the messages. So going by filter, I could look specifically for a certain level, the source of those messages, the category, I can search within the messages themselves, or look within a particular timestamp period. We can also export those messages. Under configuration, is where we would set up our email notifications. Now this would be within typical email form. Um, you can send a test email to ensure that your configuration is properly set up. And there we sent the test email successfully. When I clicked on configuration, you may have noticed another submenu pop up on the side with email, verbosity, and database. The message level is set to standard. Uh, that's just to run normal operations. You can also run uh, in debug or trace. You're showing the database itself. And again, for standard operations, that's how you would typically run your system. We'll jump back to the home screen. Now, it's very important to license your Canary system. There are two ways to do this. If you're licensing on a machine that does not have internet access, you can do so manually. This allows you to enter a license key, and that can be obtained by providing the license code and serial number. You can do that to Canary Labs, either through our support team, or you can do it on our website. The most common way would be to add the license through the internet. And you would fill out these forms, as well as the email, and select the components that you're looking to license. 
Now, from a licensing standpoint, we license the number of tags for the historian, as well as our user clients for Axiom and the Excel add-in. The API connector has 25 included by default. Uh, if you need more, you can certainly contact Canary. Uh, by and large, most instances don't require more than 25 API connections. Um, and you'll have all the zero number information here. So it's very simple to license the system. If you want to close out of a tile, you can simply click the X. Let's jump over to the admin. So with the admin, this contains the configuration settings to limit user access when appropriate. And so here we have the different endpoints. Now by default, the net.pipe anonymous will always be enabled. And that allows anyone on that local machine uh, to have access to the Canary admin. With net.tcp windows, this is when connecting remotely to another Canary admin service, we'd want this endpoint tried first using the local user's window, uh, Windows credentials. And right below it with net.tcp username, if the Windows credentials fail, then the communication will fail over to allow the user to enter credentials for remote connection. On the access submenu, this is where you can add and allow or deny particular users. You can uh, set it up as a group configuration or you could do individual users uh, to allow or deny access. To persist last connection, when checked, the Canary admin will reconnect to the last admin service connected. And when it's unchecked, it will default to the local host. But again, it's easy to jump back and forth between various connections. Now on the home screen itself, you're provided with a lot of information just by glancing at the individual tiles. For example, we already touched on the calculation service, which we have stopped, and it's clear to see that in gray. For messages, we can see uh, the warn, the error, and if there were any fatal messages. The licenses tile shows you the number of tags licensed for the historian, as well as concurrent users for Axiom and the Excel add-in. It also shows you the current version that you are running. And right now we're running version 21.2. If any of these services or components was running a different version, it would show up in red just the way the calculation service shows in red under stopped. Go ahead and close out of the tiles we've opened. You can click the Canary logo. This will pop up our company address in Martinsburg, Pennsylvania, as well as show you the current version you're running. If at any point you have any questions or concerns, you can hop over to our quick start guide, which lives on the Canary community. And this will give you a step-by-step -step rundown of how to install and go through the licensing process. I know we covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time, uh, but it really is that easy to run the Canary installer, install the appropriate components, and configure your Canary admin screen. Our goal is to uh, pack a lot of information into a short period of time, but if you do have any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat or the Q&A. We will make a recording of this webinar available to you uh, later today following the webinar. But if you have any questions, you can always reach us directly. Um, and the Canary community is a great place to start. So we have the user forum. You can drop it. Uh, looks like there's a answer. question that's come in. Oh, sure. Looks like Wayne has a question. Uh, he's asking in the Canary admin, uh, in the message tile, uh, you mentioned uh, we had different uh, levels of warnings and errors. Um, I think in the configuration he was referencing. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, 
Yeah, he was asking about the that verbosity. Um, okay, so yeah, sure. So, so as Kyle mentioned, there's the standard level, which is default. There's debug and trace. And, and really, uh, verbosity is nothing more than just the amount of information you would like to see in the message log. What I, I think this is mainly used for testing, like our support, for example, if, uh, if we're trying to troubleshoot um, maybe an error for one of our customers, we'll uh, put on either debug or even trace level uh, for a, a temporary amount of time uh, while we're trying to recreate the, the error. And then it'll actually just give us more detailed information in the message log. We don't recommend keeping it there for you know a long period of time. It, it may fill up with unnecessary information. That's so that's more point, or Sean. less. Yeah, and that's more or less just just for I would say you know, testing and checking what is the root cause of a of an error message. Yep, for standard operation, just keep it standard, and yep. that's how you want to run it. Absolutely. And back to the audit trail, like I said, it, it is easy to to filter through. So if you are having some issues, and you speak with a member of our support team, they may ask you to go through and. Uh, just dive deeper into the messages that, that you're receiving. All right. Well, any, any additional questions, Sean? I think there's one more from uh, Johan. Um, he was asking, um, his instance of Canary has different blue tiles, and he was wondering uh, why he doesn't oh, sure. see the same well, kind yeah, of tiles on your screen. Absolutely. So for various installs of the Canary system, uh, going back to the installer itself, uh, as you choose different components, those components will be displayed here. So it's very common uh, for different use cases to have different uh, tiles installed and different services. And so there are times that if you're just running a data logger, you may have a, a small number of tiles as you would jump over to that particular machine. Um, and so it really just depends on, on what's installed within your Canary system. Um, for example, we have some other uh, collection protocols for, for data collectors. And so there can be some extra tiles uh, installed for the OPC DA, uh, for example. So yeah, it just is determined by what components you have installed uh, on that particular system. Yeah, I think I see any other questions, Kyle. All right, great. Well, the goal is to pack all that information into less than 30 minutes, and it looks like we achieved that today. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by and, and checking out how to install and configure their, their Canary system. And like we said, if you ever have any questions, check out the Canary community or reach out to us directly. Uh, we hope to see you at an upcoming training event here in the near future and wish you all a great day. Thank you.